So with undithered digital audio, 16-bit, you've got less than 96 decibels of usable dynamic range. That's pretty much okay for the most part, because even in a good case acoustic situation, you're still only going to use about 90 decibels. But we've got that quantization distortion thing to deal with, which sounds bad on fade-outs of songs and just in the quiet sections between beats and things like that. So people use something called dither. With dithered digital audio, you still have the same digital clipping up at the top, but now you get actually a little bit more than the theoretical dynamic range, and that's because you have a noise floor. This gets rid of quantization distortion, and there are some sounds you can kind of hear beneath the noise floor, so it gives you a smooth drop-off where sounds can decay gracefully into the noise floor instead of suddenly cutting off at the lowest level. Let's hear what that sounds like. Without any dither, we get quantization distortion, which sounds like this. I've exaggerated it a ton. This is a lot worse than you would hear in 16-bit audio. As you can hear, the spaces between the words are falling down to total silence, and then there's a strange fizziness as the amplitude of my voice just gets a little above negative 96 and then drops below between words. To fix this, before the conversion process to 16-bit, we add just a tiny bit of noise, enough to keep the signal always just barely above negative 96 decibels full scale. That means that it gets rid of the fizziness and it gets rid of the abrupt cutting out for the trade-off of a slight amount of noise. Remember, this is hugely exaggerated in this example. The actual dither noise in 16-bit audio is more than 70 decibels quieter than what you're hearing right now. In an ordinary room, it's almost impossible to hear the dither noise at any sort of sane listening volume. The number of bits you use to represent an audio signal changes where the noise floor is compared to full scale. Now I've laid out these two diagrams like this to illustrate that 24-bit audio has a much bigger usable dynamic range, but it's not any louder. The added range is in the quiet part. And if you recall, the difference between total silence in most rooms in a house versus painfully loud, that's already only about 90 decibels. 24-bit digital audio can hold a wider range of signals from soft to loud than even the best analog equipment. Let's compare some various situations in the acoustic, analog, and digital domains. So again, we've got the acoustic domain where you've usually got approximately 90 decibels. Now, there will be special cases. If you build a soundproof room and you put in enormous speakers that can deafen you on the loud parts and you have music that has such quiet parts that you can barely hear it compared to the loud parts, then maybe you'd have a case for more than 90 decibels of dynamic range. Most of us, obviously, are not in that situation. For analog recording, most of the time we've got less dynamic range than the acoustic domain has. This is one reason why so many of the earliest CDs were classical music, because classical music, especially with a big group like an orchestra, has such a wide dynamic range that it couldn't fit on a tape or on an LP record. They actually use dynamic range compression to avoid distortion. Of course, in order to record a wider range onto a CD, you have to keep in mind that the rest of the analog domain, like just mixers and uh, microphones and stuff like that, does have a quite a wide dynamic range. So then we have standard 16-bit digital audio, the kind that you would find on a CD. This has approximately 96 decibels of dynamic range, which made the classical people very happy because, as you can see, that's more than the dynamic range that most people have available in the rooms where they listen to music. 16-bit digital audio is enough dynamic range for almost any situation. There's very few situations where you really need more than that. One situation is during recording, when many people use 24-bit digital audio. That has more dynamic range than even analog circuits do most of the time, and so the main reason recordists use 24-bit audio is to give themselves more of a margin for error. That means they can turn down the signal when they're recording to avoid clipping and not have to worry about increasing the noise floor. Now, speaking of the noise floor, you have to keep in mind that wherever the highest amount of noise is, that's going to be what's on your recording. 
So let's say that you were recording in a very loud, noisy room. That means that the noise floor of your entire recording chain is going to be at that higher level. And if you'll notice, it takes away all the advantage of 24-bit digital audio. You don't even need those extra bits because they're being covered up by noise. Here's some conclusions we can draw from all this information. In the acoustic domain, if you consider 0 decibels SPL or below, all the way up to 194 decibels, which is the maximum that air can really support without distortion because you've got areas where the air pressure reaches zero, that's such a ridiculously huge dynamic range that it's unrealistic to even worry about it during recording. So let's scale that back and just say that a useful acoustic dynamic range is around 90 decibels or less. That's what you could count on for someone that you knew would listen to something in a very quiet room, either on headphones or with a nice stereo system that can produce soft and loud sounds. In the analog domain, you've got around 50 to 80 decibels of dynamic range for recording, depending on the specific equipment you're using, and usually over 100 for other types of analog circuits, such as those that connect your microphone into a computer. For the digital domain, You've got theoretical limits, which do get messy in practice, but in 16-bit, you've got about 96 decibels, if it's done right with dither, which is just a touch more than you've got in an ideal acoustic situation. So for most cases, for most people, for most music, 16-bits is all you need for a final delivery format for music. You've also got commonly in use 24-bit digital, which has a wider dynamic range, and that's useful for recording and processing and other specialized tasks. It would be a mistake to say extremely general blanket statements like analog is always better than digital or digital is always better than analog. There are different tools and they're useful in different ways. Thanks a lot for watching. I look forward to hearing your comments and I'll gladly answer questions you have. I anticipate that some of this will cause some debate, so please be civil about it. I would recommend that you look at a site called hydrogenaudio.org. There are some very interesting forums there, especially uh, if you're into the nitty-gritty of how digital audio works. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.